Services. I just would like you to welcome from um, Kilcreen Hospital, Ms Kathleen Slattery, who is Director of Nursing. Thank you, Kathleen. Ladies and gentlemen, Anne, you took the words right out of my mouth. How do I follow all of those excellent speakers? My name is Kay Slattery, not the Kathleen, uh, and I'm Director of Nursing in Kilcreen Regional Orthopaedic Hospital in Kilkenny. A little bit far away from Cork, but nevertheless, we are one of the acute hospitals that form the South South West Hospital Group. Together with the sister hospitals of CUH, Mercy Hospital, South Infirmary, Kerry, Bantry General, Mallow General, South Tipperary and University Hospital, Waterford. And I'm glad to be here today. So why metrics? Why are they needed? Well, the time is long gone when professions are automatically assumed to be above question. In the aftermath of so many reports that have been published in recent years, both in Ireland and abroad, for example, the Mid-Staffordshire report, that highlighted where nursing practice fell short of the ideal. And that has directed a spotlight of focus on what we do and what we are. Now, fortunately, in Ireland, our profession is still held in high regard, but it's not without question. And we have an educated public who now have access through technology to everything, to knowledge, to research, to data. And we all know, especially from our nurses at the bedside, the patients come in knowing more than we do. So we now have to prove our worth. We now have to demonstrate the value of what we do. We now have to show that we work to the highest standards, that we evaluate our practice, and that we deliver evidence-based care. So it is against this background that nursing has felt the need to explicitly demonstrate that we consistently deliver safe, quality, and evidence-based care. As already spoken about by one of the previous speakers, a metric is a standard for measuring. And in nursing and midwifery metrics, we measure care processes and patient experience. They are a measure of process and not a measure of outcome. The metrics were devised in Ireland by a national consensus together with international evidence, and they developed the quality care metrics that we use here. Now they have been divided into various core sets of metrics that suit each service. These are the acute, uh, metric, uh, the acute service metrics. And as you can see, they comprise medication management, assessment, nursing documentation, patient observations, and patient experience with the subheadings underneath them. Now this is the HICWA wheel of quality, uh, which came out with the National Standards for Safer, Better Healthcare in 2012. In the acute service, this is what is measured, and I will try to demonstrate that the four themes of quality and safety that are extracted from the wheel of quality of patient-centered care effective care, safe care, and better health and well-being are well addressed by the nursing metrics. The other four quality themes, I'll just uh, review that, below the midline are to do with capacity and capability. The four I've mentioned above the midline are the ones to do with quality and safety. By measuring adherence to the quality, um, the quality metrics, we have assurance that quality care is being delivered. We, our patients, and the public at large can have confidence in the quality of care that we provide. By looking at each of uh, the domains of patient quality, I hope to uh, show to you that we are addressing them through metrics. So, patient-centered care. We're addressing this by our communication with our patients. 
by showing dignity and respect for our patients and families, involving patients in their own care planning, assisting them with their meals and, and other personal care needs, prompt response to the bell. These are the issues that matter to them. These are the issues that are, the patient experience documents. For effective care, by showing our individualised care plans, by looking at patient observations to see the patient's status, by use of the new score, the uh, early warning score, that shows how we identify and manage the deteriorating patient, and also by good pain management. If we move on to safe care, this is one that has particular resonance because this in essence deals with medication and how we manage that and how we manage avoidable incidents and errors. Under medication, through safe storage, safe prescribing, safe administration of medications, we assure patient safety. Through identifying the patient, as a previous speaker mentioned, by having the charts properly labelled. By identifying allergy status, we make sure that wrong drugs aren't given. By identifying infection status, we make sure that the proper care is given. Decrease falls. We risk assess them. We put plans of action in place to make sure that they are minimised and, if possible, eliminated. Equally with pressure care management, we risk assess them. We plan them. We put in remedial actions. And if we must, we treat them when they occur. Through ward and environmental cleanliness, we, we minimise the risk to our patients of infection. And through good hand hygiene practices, we minimise transmission of, of infection from environment or patient or staff to another. And of course, we round it all off with good documentation so that we can keep a track of elements of care. And then under health and well-being. Well, this can be globally inferred through the involvement of patient and family in their discharge plan. And this, of course, encompasses a discussion on their condition, advice on their medications, and instruction on what they need to do when they leave hospital. Oh, no, that's not quite it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think the girl with the clock would get a fright. <laughs> But we could go to the beach early, but so ha. Huh? Anyway, I'll continue. All of these components help to give the right care to the right patient at the right time and thereby prevent avoidable errors. As the Institute of Medicine in 1999 highlighted, research suggests that errors, um, that errors are caused and patient harm is caused by system and process errors. So the attention to detail, the attention and the focus of nursing on these detailed activities is important. <coughs> we pick up things before they happen. We make remedial steps. We put in action plans. This is the importance of it. And this is what we have to try and, and maintain and, and inculcate into our staff. Now, in putting together uh, this presentation, I contacted the, ho the other hospitals in the group and for feedback on how the metrics are in their locations. And I must thank the directors of nursing, but more especially the nurse practice development departments for their help in giving me information. And indeed, to Leonie Finnegan uh, from my own local NMPDU in Kilkenny. My own journey with metrics actually started around 2015. And this was, I was interested in uh, introducing them to the hospital. As a small hospital, we don't have a designated practice development team. So I used the opportunity to, um, where one of my staff wished to do a master's, that we came uh, via the learning contract to a win-win situation where she did her dissertation uh, on uh, metrics and she introduced them to the hospital. And in fact, her poster is on display out in the lobby and perhaps you'll like to see it later. Her name is Martina Sheehy. 
Now, I've, uh, I aggregated the findings from the returns I got from the various hospitals within the group. So I'm just going to give you a, a condensed summarising of them. As mentioned before, deficits in medication prescribing practices is one of the key elements that seems to be uh, a problem everywhere. Identification of use of inappropriate abbreviations, as was also mentioned. Incorrect uh, method of putting in alterations. As already said, the strike through and the uh, initials are sufficient. S uh, code signing of student, no, uh, of student entries can be a problem at times. Incorrect labelling of nursing notes. There also has been deficits in uh, risk assessing pressure area areas, and that has led to a, a problem in that the relevant care plan was not opened for that particular item. There were also weaknesses in the practice with checking of MDA drugs and locking of drug presses and trolleys. And there was incomplete care bundle uh, <laughs> documentation and some weaknesses in discharge planning. So that's just a flavour of what's going on throughout the group. And the actions that flowed from that were that deficits in prescribing where related to non-consultant hospital doctors were addressed by being brought to them both immediately for attention on the ward and also through medication safety bulletins, through NCHD training and through induction programmes. In fact, in my own local hospital, one of our nurses has become part of the induction team who gives the ND, uh, NCHDs part of the induction uh, talk and focuses on medication and prescription. Prescription metric results are discussed at drugs and therapeutics committees, at, safety, at medication safety committees, and they're also highlighted to pharmacy staff and brought to executive management team meetings. In some locations, uh, MDA control drug registers have been updated and um, this has been to facilitate documentation and drug checks between shifts. There have been reviews of falls risk assessment. Education plans have been put in place and documentation has been amended to improve compliance with discharge uh, details where appropriate. And in one area, a system is being trialled currently for locking medication trolleys. <coughs> so you can see that from where the problems have been identified, actions have been put in place. The, me the metrics are measured monthly and the results are forwarded to the directors of nursing in each hospital. It's discussed at CNM and ADON forums, and, it, and the results are displayed publicly in the ward. This gives the staff ownership, and they come up with their own solutions. In my own location, Metrics has directly led to the introduction of formal induction for NCHDs. It has also led to the introduction of the urinary catheter care bundles and the PIVC care bundles. Quality metrics continue to inform our practice and they promote quality improvement and accountability. By displaying our results publicly, we promote a culture of transparency and accountability. The, the public have confidence that we are not hiding suboptimal practice, but are acknowledging the practice and then solving the problems. However, we must bear in mind that metrics are only a snapshot in time and must be taken in context. There may be other elements, such as staffing levels, skill mix levels, staff turnover and retention, absenteeism and absence of continuous professional development, and awareness, awareness by senior management of importance at the front line is important. We need to know that standards of care are being monitored so we, we can be assured of safe standards. And we now have verifiable evidence instead of anecdotal evidence. Nevertheless, uh, it may be that standards are falling because of some of those elements of low staffing levels that might be causing the problem. And that is where we, as senior nursing managers, have to support our frontline staff by making the business case 
using the, the, the figures, the data that we have that show that a fall in standards may be contributing to a fall in quality. And that is where senior nurse managers have to work together with the front line to help to improve the service. On a personal level, I have found that metrics gives me a direct connection to the front line, where, where the patient and the nurse interact. This is where the science and art of nursing is experienced by the patient. This is where nursing really happens and really matters. This is the essence of nursing. And for me, the great tradition of nursing in Ireland is enhanced and strengthened by metrics. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.